Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the Tarot portion and the second half of my daily astrology vlog, which you can check out on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. Here I will discuss the tarot card that sits on the side of the page, then I'll do a quick review of the day's aspects before I play another card that may give us something more to think about. So let's get into it. The card that currently sits on the side of the page is the Five of Wands, and it's there because it represents the first 10 days or the first decan of the sun's transit in the land of Leo. Leo is a fire sign and wands are fire in the tarot and fire element symbolism is about our passion, our drive, our, our spark, our motivation, our will to act. Uh, sort of the momentum that we get going, you know, it's that it's that uh, that feeling that gets us moving forward. Okay, so here we have the five of wands, and we see a moment of sort of disarray with some conflict or rivalry arising between people. Okay, um, a little show of power here. Everybody seems to be hitting above the belt, but um, everybody also seems to want to come out on top. Okay, so uh, here we find ourselves, you know in a situation, listen, if people are coming after you just to sort of uh, show off or, you know, to, to show that they are better at something or really good at something, we don't have to necessarily engage in battle with them. And I look at this, you know, especially when it comes to wands, because wands are about motivation and momentum and wanting to get moving forward. I look at this as, a, as something that slows us down, stops us, distracts us from the path forward. Okay, so... Don't allow rivalry, don't allow competition, don't allow conflict with other people to slow your progress on your path forward, okay? If you know what it is that you're about, you've got motivation and momentum and drive on your side, um, you know, try to avoid a situation like this because while it feels good to spar with other people and while it's good to have a little bit of healthy competition, um, definitely this is not forward motion on our goals, right? Okay. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle some cards while I remind myself and the cards that the sun is in Leo. Mercury is also currently in Leo. And, you know, in Leo, we just want to um, shine and be admired and uh, admire other people as well, sort of regardless of our own astrological makeup. We can dramatize and demonstrate our own blessings, our own beauty, and sort of those that of the people around us as well, okay? So um, self-expression should be very comfortable at this time. We feel at home and in, in our own skin, and we can share our love and our worth with the rest of the world in a really positive way. The moon is also in Leo all day, okay? Yesterday was the new moon, and that was when we took the time to pause and consider the present moment. Now we can begin the cycle of increase. This is the time when we share our dreams, we state our intentions, start to make a plan going forward. This way, a week from now, when we reach that first quarter moon in Scorpio, we'll have a really well-defined idea what actions we can take to bring us closer to the goals we've set. And that's fixed fire versus fixed fire, friends. So give some thought to the sun, the character of the sun. It really doesn't have a choice but to shine. It just burns steady all the time. And this represents in astrology, the human soul, the way our spirit kind of shines through our personality and our deeds. So when, when Leah's in charge, as it is today, uh, we can't help but to sort of burn <laughs> with our own light, okay, simply for the joy of sharing, and also be because of the good that we know it does in the world, just like the sun. Um, moon goes square to Mars this morning, and we have a little self-control uh, challenge. This can make us, you know, we feel like we want to take action and perhaps there is something that we are in pursuit of that we would like to get that's what mars does it asserts itself it goes in pursuit uh but that square says yeah sometimes when you go in pursuit like that you come across as a little pushy a little impatient and that can slow us down that can sort of 
uh, cause other people to put, put up walls and defenses that get in the way of our ability to get what we want. So we have to remember that we can have whatever we want as long as we're willing to ask for it in an unselfish tone of voice. And sometimes that Mars energy doesn't come across as unselfish at all. Okay, and then this afternoon, Moon goes square to Uranus. That's another kind of difficult vibe where we might just feel sort of excitable, jumpy, restless, okay, uh, you know, bored. We might be looking for some stimulation at this time. And again, we have to be careful about how we're going to behave in response to that feeling. Moon goes conjunct to Mercury this evening, close to seven o'clock. And this is our thoughts in like under pressure, intensified with our feelings. Okay. Uh, it can be hard to tell the difference between our thoughts and feelings. And honestly, we might just feel compelled to speak up and spit out whatever it is on our mind and just deal with the consequences. All right. And then uh, this evening at around 1130, uh, that void of course moon goes in opposition to Saturn. Void of course, of course, means that the moon is making its last aspect in the sign of Leo during this transit before it moves tomorrow into Virgo. But for now, it's in opposition to Saturn, and this can be this kind of a real, really depressing effect on our emotions. It's kind of a difficult day on the emotional side of things, right? Uh, but late this evening, there's this low ebb of emotion. It can be a restricted feeling, or it can just feel sort of sad or low. And uh, you know, remember that this is a two-hour aspect. Remember that. This is a mood we do sometimes encounter, and it's temporary. If you're feeling a really low ebb, if you're feeling, um, you know, if you're really struggling, reach out to somebody. Talk to somebody at this time, okay? Spit it out. Let them know what's on your mind. Let somebody who's concerned about you know what's on your mind. And then our void, of course, is around 13 and a half hours. It spans the midnight hour, okay? So void, of course, is that period of time when we think of the moon as being absent the strict influence of any sign uh it's a great time to be engaged in your intuitive creative practices whatever it is you do that calms your mind and helps you focus your intentions and these this way we can have these important conversations with ourselves and spirit it help us process like these emotions and these impulses that we've been dealing with and then of course when the void of course period spans the midnight hour i always think of it as a good time for ritual or spell work so Right now, any magical requests I make will have to be in alignment with the energies of this newly waxing in moon in Leo. I might say something like, uh, Luna, grant me the sustained passion to see these intentions through their best possible increase for full manifestation in their proper time. That's a good, that's a good place to start. And then on the sun side of the page today, we have all ongoing aspects. Venus is square to Jupiter just through tomorrow. Uh, and Venus and Jupiter, you know, this is receptive and this is expansive and growing and sharing. So both, we, we, we're really open to receiving good stuff and we're open to sharing the good stuff we have. It's a, it's a very positive vibe. We can relax and be good company to others. We can share in a way that grows our connections to other people. But the square aspect says, you know what, this isn't a very serious vibe. There isn't a lot of gravity in this situation. So let's keep our interactions light and try not to take things too seriously. Mercury is square to Mars and Mercury is square to Uranus, both through August 1st, okay? Square to Mars, Mercury and Mars are both really fast moving forward thinking and it's possible just to get ahead of ourselves to plan and act so quickly that we forgot to consider all the variables or to allow things time to unfold. Okay, so at this time, if you find yourself hurrying, slow down and follow through on the stuff you've ever already started. If Mars is there, you've definitely already started something and there's something to follow through on. Mercury square to Uranus changes to the plan or to the regular routine. That can be exciting or it can be stressful or confusing. So uh, when Uranus is involved, I say, you know, make sure you're communicating with the people that you keep around you. Okay. We want everyone to be on the same page. North node is conjunct to Uranus through the 15th. North node is conjunct to Uranus in Taurus. And Uranus has been in Taurus since 2019, will be there until 2027. And it really represents this shifting landscape of resources, right? The things that we like to try to get our hands on, the stuff we rely on for our daily life and living. 
um, you know, and we've been experiencing this since 2019, the change in the way resources are provided to us, the change in the way we are able to get things. And now the prices are going up and, and sometimes you just can't get your hands on the, on the stuff you want or need. You've got to switch brands or go to a different store for it, that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, North Node here is about our current trajectory. And in Taurus, that means our current trajectory is, try is in trying to secure the reliable receipt of those resources. So North Node conjunct Uranus here, very buzzy, very um, not very confident vibe, okay? It feels, it feels stressful. It feels, uh, you know, it, like we're uncertain about our ability to get the resources we're likely to need. And uh, that's in flux for us right now. Uh, but don't let it fool you. Keep your eyes on the prize. Count the progress you have made so far. Um, and, and you will see that you, you, you're going to make it forward. Pluto continues retrograde through October 8th. This is Pluto's final retrograde in Capricorn for the next 200 years or so. Okay. And it's bringing us through some real fundamental changes of character. We are rewriting programs of the psyche, of the personal psyche, things that we might have thought of as foundational to our being are changing, okay? We might not notice these changes or we might not understand what they truly are until the whole story has been told. So if you are struggling, if you feel lost, remember that this is what change feels like. So take it easy on yourself. Your subconscious is really working hard right now. Saturn continues retrograde. Saturn's retrograde in Aquarius. This is where we find that we want to build structures and reinforce bonds that work for everyone. And Aquarius really doesn't care if we have to tear the whole building down and start over. As long as in the end, all the people are served and uplifted. Okay, so the retrograde here asks us each personally, how have you contributed? Whether you think it is enough considering the support that you require or enjoy. And we may, be time at, we may be asked at this time to recommit ourselves to a more active civic life. Jupiter went re retrograde yesterday. And uh, Jupiter is currently in Aries where we find our growth and expansion through decisive action. Jupiter's retrograde wants to show us that there are decisive actions we can make for ourselves to find the personal growth and expansion that we seek. Neptune is retrograde. In Pisces, where it's easy to dream and fantasize and to live in denial and to fool ourselves, but the retrograde makes those dreams and denials really transparent to us. We can see the difference between the fantasy and the reality, and that's a gift because having a clear picture about where we are helps us see the path forward toward what we desire. Chiron retrograde, Mercury trying to Chiron in retrograde, Chiron's retrograde is in Aries, and this is all about the work that we personally each have to do to heal our own social wounds. Mercury's trying to Chiron here, is blessing with us with an ability to find solutions to everyday problems that will very much work to our benefit, okay? So it's a good time to have quick conversations with people that will help them understand where we're coming from and how we would like to be addressed or treated, okay? Sometimes you have to show people how how they're supposed to treat you or let them know how they're supposed to treat you. And sometimes they really appreciate that actually. All right. Well, isn't that funny? Um, just yesterday we got the four of pentacles as well. So four of pentacles is about your physical resources. Pentacles are about your health, wealth, and finances. It's about your physical well-being, how well you care for your body and your physical self how well you care for the nice things you like to have, and you know, also how well you mind your finances. So uh, this, is a, this is a card that represents co conservation. You can see this person clearly has their mind on their money and their money on their mind, and maybe their money under their feet as well. They're really trying to hold it down and hold on to it, right? So uh, it's, it's guidance to be conservative, to, to pay uh, conservative and responsible attention to our own physical well-being, to the nice things we like to have, and also to be really conservative and responsible with our finances, okay? Don't let them just slip out from between your fingers. Um, and that can be a real self-control challenge. We can feel jumpy and restless, you know? We might uh, start 
I, we might have an urge to spend it to help us with our feelings, you know, like it would, I would feel better if I could just buy this thing right now, okay? So remember, you know, especially when it comes to your money, not to let your, your emotions influence how you're using it, okay? It's not about whether you feel optimistic right now or whether you feel sad right now. It's really about whether it was planned for and in the budget, <laughs> all right? Um, slow down and follow through, all right? Be conservative with your actions. Be conservative with, like, th this, this can be about the way you spend your money, too, and it can also be about the way you use your body, all right? Don't get ahead of yourself. Um, that's very much Mercury square Mars. Don't, uh, you know, don't forget what's in the budget and just and just spend because you've decided that you have this new thing that you need to get started on right now, okay? We've really got to plan and put things into the budget and also plan for how we're going to use our bodies in advance and not just assume that it's all going to be there for us. Keep your eyes on the prize. Our trajectories for material security right now are shifting. They are in flux, and that's really obvious to us because we can't always get our hands on the resources we like to have. And um, it's looking, we're looking down the road, and we're like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the resources. I don't know if I'll be able to, you know, afford gas in a year, or you know, I'll, I don't know if I'll be able to, uh, you know, keep buying the groceries that I like to, to buy, or if I'm going to have to sort of scale it back a little bit. Um, Pluto is in retrograde. We are going through these changes, but I was just going to go start going back down the list again, and then I realized that I was working on the Four of Pentacles. So there are a lot of good opportunities on the page right now to think about, um, you know, about how we have planned to use our resources and uh, and to not use them, um, therefore, in an unplanned way. All right. And that doesn't mean that we have to be stingy or we have to completely hold back from everything. It just ha it just means check the budget, make sure that you have it there. Or if you don't, go ahead and you know you know add it to the budget. Decide how much money is going to be allocated for that so that you know when you can get it right. Taken together with the five of wands, again. Um, you know, this is not a very conservative approach to using your passion and drive, okay? This is just sort of like getting into the comments section and, with, and arguing with people over something that you're passionate about, and it doesn't really do anything to help further the cause, right? So don't allow yourself to get hung up in arguments with people, okay? Uh, don't, get, don't allow yourself to get hung up in struggles for authority, authoritativeness, sort of domination in one area, one field, or around one idea. Think about, you know, the, the thing you're fighting about as a hill and ask if this is the hill that you want to die on, right? Is it really worth it to be in this, um, in this fight right now? Or is this just slowing me down and keeping me from making progress on that thing that I am in hot pursuit of, right? Um, this is another way of getting distracted, right? We don't want to get distracted from using our resources wisely, and we also don't want to get distracted from using our energy wisely. So there is that. And friends, I think that's all I have to say about it today. I truly appreciate your time with me. My name is Mel Rose, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more Astrology Today and Tarot.